So, JB had a stream last Saturday, and uh, if you didn't catch it, there was a really interesting dialogue between Chris Youth Resist and Pine Creek Duck. And it looks like Chris Youth Resist has become a Schopenhauer idealist almost full blown. So he was trying to explain his worldview to Pine Creek Doug, and he said this to him. He said, I believe there's the material world, and then there's the phenomena of the material world. Pine Creek Doug cut him off. Didn't quite cut him off because of that, but he cut him off and said, well, your worldview is very complicated. And then this was a really interesting thing, because Pine Creek Doug then goes on to describe his worldview, okay? where he says, my worldview is much simpler, and he describes his simple worldview, where, and I'll tell you exactly what he said, it's really interesting. These are his exact words. He thinks, I think the material world is all that exists. I could be wrong. We can study it, and we can learn from it. Okay, what's interesting about that is that contradiction that I've been saying exists the entire time with the materialist worldview exists right in his sentence. Right there, right in front of you. Pine Creek Doug called himself a materialist. These are his exact words. Let me read them again. I think the material world is all that exists. I could be wrong. We can study it and we can learn from it. So he's calling himself a materialist, but he is using an idealist. <laughs> he's becoming an idealist as he's calling himself a materialist. The contradiction's right there. He said, we can study it. We can learn from it. Who's this we, Pine Creek? You and me, Craig, conscious agents. You and me, Craig. Yeah, you, me, the people listening to us, conscious agents. Calls himself a materialist, but as he's explaining his materialist worldview, he actually becomes an idealist while he's explaining it. Said, he said himself, we can study the material world, we can learn about it. The we he is referring to is me and him, conscious agents. We are conscious agents. Consciousness itself is the ontological primitive. You resist was pretty much correct. There's there is matter, and there's the phenomena of matter, and there's a subtle distinction between the two. And there's no way around this, guys. Those of you who are still materialists, you are going to have to give it up. Even Pine Creek Doug himself, when he is describing his materialist worldview, became an idealist for the purpose of describing his worldview. He put himself as the, consciousness itself as the ontological primitive to describe his worldview. He said, we can know the real material world, we can study. Who's he talking about? Conscious agents. Donald Hoffman couldn't have put it better himself. <laughs> we, we can study the real material world. So, if you're not ready to quite yield yet, I mean, there's no way around this, guys. You can agree with me now, you can agree with me three months from now, you can agree with me a year from now, you can agree with me five years from now. If the choice is binary, between materialism and idealism, materialism fails. It is insufficient to explain the data. And as of right now, the choice is binary. So, let's take another example to underscore this and make this even more obvious. I gave my, my yellow boogie board analogy to Deacon Vernon. He balked. Okay, let's say Deacon Vernon man, Pine Creek Doug and I are looking at a rainbow. We're holding hands together looking at a rainbow. Wow, it's beautiful. I don't know, sounds really gay, Craig. No, it's beautiful. Here's the problem for the materialist. Well, all three of us will be seeing a rainbow. There is technically no thing there. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, deconverted man and Pine Creek Doug will soon be idealists. Here, oh, here is why. Deconverted man, Pine Creek Doug, and myself are all three of us holding hands looking at a rainbow. No, it's not gay. It's beautiful. I love you, Pine Creek Dog. I love you too, Greg. It's beautiful. There is no thing there. What is the material that's going to disassemble and take apart and analyze? Nothing. Why? There's nothing there. It's how the light interacts with the atmosphere, creating the conditions wherein we have a visual experience of color that isn't there. <laughs> it's not there. It's a visual experience. But there is no thing that it actually corresponds to, materially speaking. It's the light interacting with the atmosphere. So my, one of my eyes will see the rainbow differently from one of my other eyes. Deacon Vernon Man will see a different rainbow than I will see. Pine Creek Doug will see a different rainbow than Deacon Vernon Man. Deacon Vernon Man's rainbow will be, you know, pretty much woke, gay rights, uh, gay rights rainbow. It's, it's just like you'd expect. 
And Pine Creek Dogs would be a lot more manly man. My, my, my rainbow is manly man, Craig. But we'd all be seeing different things. Why? Because there's no thing there that it actually corresponds to. It's a visual experience in consciousness. Okay, you're not satisfied with that analogy. Every time I use an analogy, and if you think you can debunk the analogy, I can move to a more precise analogy. There's no way around this, guys. Materialism is over. So here's an even better one. Donald Hoffman does a thing who's a conscious realist who says, you know, consciousness is, consciousness itself is the ontological primitive, just like Pine Creek Doug said. He said, there's a real material world. Okay, I agree with you. It's only physical. Maybe, maybe not. But we can learn from it. Okay, we, he put himself as conscious agent, and he's talking about him examining the world as a conscious agent, the ontological primitive, consciousness itself. So him and, if Donald Hoffman, who calls himself a conscious realist, will put dots on the screen, he does, he shows this to his audience, puts dots on the screen, the materialist only sees the material, is only breaking down the material reality, which is dots on the screen. We, the conscious agents, perceive the dots on the screen in 3D because of the color scheme. It's not 3D, but it, what our experience, our visual experience of the dots on the screen is 3D. The materialist would never know that fact. The materialist could never tell you anything about how the dots on the screen manifest in consciousness. And there's a discrepancy there, which means materialism fails, idealism is the only game in town. Guys, this isn't negotiable. If you're still a materialist, after listening to three or four of my videos, you can agree with me now, you can agree with me three years from now, you can agree with me five years from now. The reason why I jumped to quantum mechanics, just so you understand, is that some of you may balk at some of these analogies. They're just to underscore the obvious. Once you go to quantum mechanics, there's no getting away from it. Why? Because the mathematics is precise, and quantum mechanics tells us stuff about the very nature of reality itself at the quantum level. And the three things it tells us, the science, remember, Deacon Vernon and Pine Creek Dog will be the first people to tell you, science this, science that. We're Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. Science, respectively. All we care about is science, science, science. Okay, but their science is Stone Age science, circa 1908. Prior to the dawn of the quantum era, you could be forgiven for thinking of the world scientifically as a materialist, the metaphor for reality would be it's a great big clock. It's all mechanics. It's all stuff in mechanics. And that's the only thing to know. We come to the dawn of the quantum era, we find that the nature of reality itself is a lot different, a lot different than science had previously understood. And a hundred years later, we're still trying to wrap around our brains around the fact what it all means. But what it clearly means, materialism is over. Why? Because there are three things we know about the nature of reality itself. Two of those three, two of those three things, and these are facts. This is why I jumped to quantum mechanics, why there's no arguing it. The mathematics behind quantum mechanics is precise. The, the math behind, you know, the science that Deacon Vertiman and Pine Creek Duggar are talking about, Stone Age science, circa 1908. The science that builds a car, an airplane. They might be right in that, that paradigm. But the paradigm has shifted. Why? Because the science that powers your cell phone is a hundred times more precise. And the quantum mechanics tells us the nature of the reality at the quantum level. And it's way different than a materialist ever imagined. Three things it tells us precisely, specifically, about the nature of reality itself. One, reality is granular. Okay, that's consistent with materialism. What does that mean? My desk in front of me. If I take my desk in front of me and I disassemble it and break it down, I can find the most minutest little tiny particle of a desk. It's granular in nature. There's the smallest possible particle of the desk that I can break the desk down to. So that's consistent with materialism. What's the smallest possible measurement? It's something like Planck's smallest measurement. I forget what it's called. It's 10 to the negative 30, something like that. So that detail about reality is consistent with materialism. Here are the two others, though, guys. And... Pine Creek, all you materialists, everything I'm telling you is the God's honest truth. If you didn't ag agree that my analogies, if my analogies don't satisfy, right here, what I'm about to tell you eliminates materialism as a worldview, as a paradigm. It is an outmoded way, way of thinking about the world. The reason why I jumped to quantum mechanics, why there's no arguing with quantum mechanics. There are 10,000 different interpretations of quantum mechanics. There are roughly 10. Of those 10, there are, rough, there are five that are mainstream. 
of those five that are mainstream, only two keep materialism alive. And there are case studies and motivated reasoning, as I've explained many times in my videos, so I won't go into it again. Balmy mechanics, pilot wave, and many worlds, both of which are false positions. Why? Because this is what quantum mechanics teaches us about the nature of reality itself at the quantum level. Lesson number two, and this is not negotiable, it's a fact. Reality is indeterminate. Oh, bang! Gotcha. Indeterminate. Is there, isn't there, is there, isn't there? Indeterminate at the quantum level. Is there, isn't there? <laughs> is there, isn't there? It's indeterminate, guys. Materialism's over. That, that almost completely annihilates materialism as a possibility. Now, what do I mean by in, in, indeterminate? You may have heard of the Heisenberg Uncertainly Principle. No, we haven't. Okay, well, you should. You should know what the Heisenberg Uncertainly Principle is. What the Heisenberg Uncertainly Principle tells us, if I know exact position of, a, of an electron, then I can't know its momentum. If I know the momentum of an electron, I can't know its position and vice versa. Now, why is this important? At the quantum level, this is extraordinarily important. As I said, the mathematics that created your cell phone is really precise. This is all quantum mechanics revealed to us as the nature of reality itself and is a lot more porous and ethereal than scientists would have, had, would have believed circa 1908. Materialism is over. It is an outmoded way of viewing reality. Why? Because reality, at least one attribute of reality at the quantum level is indeterminate. Now, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle exists sort of at the macro level, but it doesn't really matter. Why? If I know the position of the car, I can't know its momentum. Okay, but it's not a big enough discrepancy to make any difference. So the Heisenberg uncertainty principle exists at the macro level. You know, the car is going 60 miles an hour. Well, you're wrong, Craig. It's going 60 miles an hour, 100, it's going 60 miles, 100 seconds, and three quarters of a millisecond an hour. Oh, my bad. I thought it was going 60 miles an hour. See, it's irrelevant. There's a discrepancy there at the macro level too, but it's totally irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. But at the quantum level, it's really important. And it eliminates materialism as a possibility. What the proper metaphor for the nature of reality, indeterminate nature of reality, I'm not really sure. Is there, isn't there? Is there, isn't there? It tripped Einstein himself out. So Pine Creek Doug and uh, what's your name? What's your name, Deacon Verman? Deacon Verman, <laughs> what's your actual name? I don't know. I don't know what his actual name is. What? To, 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 one thing I'll say in your favor, Einstein himself, the greatest scientist of all time, took your point of view. That's why he thought there was something wrong with quantum mechanics. Why? Because the indeterminate probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics tripped him out. Why to trip them out? For the exact same reason it should be tripping you out. It eliminates materialism as a possibility. There's a porous, ethereal nature to reality itself that scientists are starting to just barely understand. But that's a fact about the nature of reality itself. It's a lot more porous and ethereal than we would have imagined circa 1908. So Einstein himself balked at the... At the Last two attributes of reality said, there must be something wrong. There must be hidden variables that are eliminating the probabilistic nature of reality itself. <laughs> That's a pretty good Einstein. Sound a little like Schwarzenegger, a little like Einstein. Tomato, tomato. They're both very similar, very smart. Sounds a little bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger, my Einstein, I agree. But there's a probabilistic, indeterminate nature to reality itself. You've heard of the wave-particle duality, or you should have heard of the wave-particle duality. Prior to measurement, the particle exists in a wave of probability. Isn't there? Now the measurement gets taken. Is there? Isn't there? Is there? Isn't there? Tripped Einstein out. Why? It eliminates materialism as a... As a, as a it, it says something completely different about the nature of reality than scientists had thought going into the quantum era. It's more porous and ethereal than we had previously imagined. That's a fact, guys. There's no way around this. And here's the death, here's the complete death knell for materialism. Just the third thing that quantum mechanics has taught us about the nature of reality itself at the quantum level. It is relational. Bang! Ooh! Ooh! It's over. Relational. It's relational. As I've said about my desk in front of me, there's an object-based ontology which is consistent with materialism, then there's a context-based ontology. Oh! 
came over from materialists. Why? Because the context-based ontology is really important. At the quantum level, it tells us... Now, I get why people don't really understand this. I've been saying this one a lot. Reality itself is a lot like velocity. There is no standalone ontology to the concept of velocity. If I tell you how fast, if I say to you, how fast is that train going? This is just an analogy, but this analogy will help you understand. That question cannot be answered outside of a relationship to something else. Reality itself is a lot like that. Context-based ontology at the quantum level is extraordinarily important. What does it mean at the quantum level? There is no actual standalone ontology to the real material world to some degree. Just like velocity, it, it, the, the real material world manifests in relationship to other things. So if I ask you, how fast is that train going? There's no real answer. It depends, is the answer. Depends on what? Where you stand in relation to the train. If you are standing on the ground watching the train go by, it's going 100 miles an hour. If you're inside the train, it's standing still. Now, scientists have known that for 200 or so years. That's the very nature of simul that there's no simultaneity was the essence of, uh, what's it called? Uh, not quantum mechanics, the other one. The other big breakthrough. The other one, general relativity. There's no such thing as velocity independent of a relationship to other sets of properties. To some degree, that is also true of the real material world itself. It only exists, quote-unquote, relationally. Now, that's an important fact, and that's a fact, and that eliminates materialism as a possibility. The reason why that fact, again, same thing I said about the indeterminate nature of reality, does not manifest at the macro level. That's why people are getting confused. That's why it trips scientists out. Why? At the macro level, not quantum level, I look at my desk in front of me, it has object-based ontology, it exists. It exists independent of anything I do to it. I go to sleep, I can't think about it and make it act differently. This is why people get tripped out by idealism, they don't recognize what idealism actually means. It just means consciousness itself is your starting point. It's all means, ontological primitive. But the desk exists at the macro level, independent of anything I do. I go to sleep at night, the desk is still there. I wake up in the morning, the desk is still there. It acts independent of me and it has an object-based ontology. That's materialism. That's science right up to the dawn of the quantum era. Why? Because that's what we would do as a scientist. We would say, you know, I can disassemble the desk. It's made out of wood. I can heat the wood up. This is what I can tell you about wood, and then someone can come along tomorrow and verify all the things I said about, about the, the object-based ontology of the desk. That's the essence of science, materialistic science. That only gets you so far, though. Why? Because we're now in the quantum era. doesn't tell you anything about the context-based ontology of the desk, and that's extraordinarily important at the quantum level. At the quantum level, that desk, at the, at the macro level, that desk has standalone ontology. Okay? It doesn't at the quantum level. It doesn't. It only exists in relationship to other sets of properties. That's a fact, guys. If you don't clearly understand that fact, I promise it's a fact. The real material world at the quantum level only exists relationally, just like velocity. It has no standalone ontology. That's the part that trips out all the scientists. Why? Because it eliminates materialism as a possibility. The probabilistic indeterminate nature of reality itself. Of reality itself. It's not that much of a big stretch of the imagination. It's actually to the great discredit of the scientific community that they got so tripped out by this. Why, it's really not that hard to wrap your brain around. You just need to open your mind a little. It means that reality itself is a lot more porous and ethereal than scientists would have liked to believe circa 1908. They're ideologues to some degree. That's why they're all still materialists, even though materialism was a, totally decimated as a possibility circa 1926. Einstein himself, the greatest scientist of all time, tried to defend materialism. That's why he balked at the implications of quantum mechanics and insisted something had to be wrong. That's where he got the famous, God does not play dice with the universe. And um, there was a series of letters between him and Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr answer was who something like who are you to say how God does or doesn't do or something like that. But eventually Einstein yielded. 
Why? Because quantum mechanics is precise, and the things I just told you it says about the nature of reality itself, it actually says. Two of those three, three things that it tells us eliminate materialism as a possibility. One, reality is granular. That's consistent with materialism. Two, reality is indeterminate. Uh-oh, materialism's over. Three, reality is relational. Uh-oh, materialism's over. There's an object-based ontology to that desk, and there's a context-based ontology. Now, I prefer the simple analogies. So, a really simple analogy. Go back to the simple analogies. Why? Because they can clarify things a lot better. The reason why I go to the more precise, you know, jump to quantum mechanics is because atheists don't let you use simple analogies. They always find holes in your simple analogy. Think they're being smart when they're actually just kind of being a little dense. They're just not getting what the analogy is trying to tell them. You can't really debunk an analogy. An analogy is just to, so, to underscore the obvious. So if you balk at my rainbow analogy, I didn't like your rainbow analogy, Craig. Maybe feel comfortable. All right, fine. <laughs> you didn't like my rainbow analogy. Here's the perfect. Here's another analogy, but it's an analogy. When you go to see a painting, say you're going to see P Picasso's Guernica, okay? The materialist, what the materialist says about Guernica is irrelevant. Only a pure science dork cares. Cares. Somebody cares about like what the canvas is made out of and the material configuration of the canvas and the and like you know it's made out of uh, you know canvas I guess <laughs> and, and it's, you know what the pigments in the in the paints are made of and what's the material only a dork the most dorky scientific dork cares that much about the material facts about Picasso's Guernica how it presents itself in consciousness the visual experience of it is the entire story. That's an analogy. But here's another analogy that eliminates materialism as a possibility. Again, it's an analogy. A part of, the, of how we experience the world is interactive. There's a facts about the world, the material facts, this goes all the way back to Kant. The phenomena, nomina, the, the noumena, phenomena distinction. This is what Chris was saying to Pine Creek. Pine Creek cut him off to say your worldview is too complicated. Here's my simple worldview, but in his simple worldview he became an idealist for presenting his view of the world. Think of it this way. What even what is even a worldview outside of consciousness? It doesn't even exist. But even the idea of your worldview starts in your consciousness. There's no way around this guys. There's only two isms on the table, materialism and idealism. And I can decimate materialism. If those ones don't satisfy, I can do a hundred times better ones from now until Sunday. Materialism is over. It's an outmoded way of viewing reality. And this is a really important fact, and this is a really important conversation relative to atheism and Christianity. When Pine Creek spent his first two and a half hours browbeating pure John Buck, <laughs> poor John Buck about, you know, does hell exist or whatever, the, whatever on earth. You know, why that, why that dynamic is allowed to happen, I do not know. But somehow when there's one Christian, there's five atheists, they just get to, like, you know, demand that he answer all their questions about God as if he's God himself. And that's the only, that's the only interaction that seems to happen. That never happens any other way. Imagine five Christians and one atheist, and we just, you know, demanded that the atheist answer all our questions for two and a half straight hours. It never happens that way. But those days are ending too. Why? Because the reason why that happens, atheists dominate the space because there are more of them here. That day is also coming to an end. Pretty soon, not very long from now, there will be more Christians in the space than atheists. We're almost equal at this point. Because more Christians have appeared in the last two years. Pretty soon it's going to be roughly equivalent to the population. Faster than the rate of deconversion. I'll talk about this in videos to come. But this is a really important fact. And again, this is a fact. Faster than the rate of people deconverting from religion, they're going to be migrating online. Pretty soon we're going to get to the part where Christians outnumber the atheists 5 to 1 as they do in the real, real population. The real population is 10 to 1. But they're going to get online faster than they're going to de deconstruct or deconvert. Which means they're going to start outnumbering atheists in this space. By a lot. So the days when you get to, you know, John is the only Christian and you get to browbeat him for two straight hours are going to end too. They are. So I said, the only, the only people who, who are prepared for what is to come, the only type of atheist prepared for the days to come are the philosophical atheists. They're going to be the only ones standing at the end of the day. 
Why? Because they don't care about, they don't need me to be wrong about anything. They don't need me to be dumb. They don't need anything about me. They don't need to browbeat me and, dis and show how there's contradictions in my world, world. They don't need to do that. They're interested in philosophy of religion. They're honest actors, okay, and they don't believe in God. So once they have their core audience, their core audience will, will stay from now until the end of time, till Jesus come, till the second coming of Jesus himself. But the Pine Creek mode of like, you know, here's two hours, let me browbeat the Christian for two hours and just, you know, keep asking them questions the entire time. Why we let them get away with that, I don't know. But that day, that day is old, that day is coming to an end too. Why? Because it's not, it's not tenable. First of all, that type of interaction, we, sh we shouldn't put a stop to it, you know. It's not, it's not a fair way of interacting. He gets to ask questions for two straight hours and nobody puts him on the hot seat. He doesn't have to do anything. That's how it always goes with him and Christians. But it doesn't matter. Why? Because all, all, of his, all of his efforts at deconstructing individual people are going to be water under the bridge. Just like all the content creators that I've been talking about, the stuff they're talking about right now, taking flush down the toilet, it's irrelevant. This right here that I'm talking about is extraordinarily important, hasn't happened in the space yet. It's extraordinarily important to atheist Christianity. It's going to automatically, automatically, just like if you think materialism is the only worldview in town, it automatically produces atheism. Idealism. You don't have to be a, a believer to be an idealist. It is the, the philosophy to come for the next hundred years. Why? It's the only one on the table that accounts for the stuff and the phenomena of the stuff, how it presents itself in consciousness. Materialism one tells you about the stuff itself. That only got you so far. Yes, that was the bread and butter of actual science. Separate mind and matter and just talk about matter as its quantifiable nature of matter itself. That gets you so far. You can build cars and airplanes. That's the bread and butter of science circa 1908. You could be forgiven for being a materialist in 1908 with Newtonian mechanics. There were metaphor about reality that every scientist and every philosopher would have told you circa 1908 would be reality is a great big clock. And it's all stuff and the mechanics of stuff. But even if you're an atheist, Chris, Chris's far more nuanced approach while, while Pine Creek Doug said it was complex, too complicated, is actually a hundred times more correct and corresponds more accurately to the data. At least one thing he said. There's matter and there's the phenomena of matter. Those are two separate things. Even if you only think, even if you don't think there's supernatural, you don't think there's dual anything, there's no dualism, there's no spooky holy spirits or anything like that, there's no demons, there's no supernatural agency. So being as charitable as possible to a Pine Creek Doug worldview, this is as charitable as humanly possible, he would say, in the beginning, stuff. Okay, I'm not even going to go, how'd the stuff get here? Kalam! I'm not even going to ask him that. It's in the beginning, stuff. And out of the configurations of stuff arose eventually human beings and then eventually consciousness. That's as charitable as possible to his worldview. Even then, you still have a subtle distinction between consciousness itself the phenomena of the stuff, how the stuff presents itself in consciousness, and the stuff itself. There's a distinction there. And that distinction means idealism succeeds where materialism fails. End of discussion. The only... I swear to God, guys, it's the end of the discussion. You can debate me now. You can say I'm wrong now. You can challenge me now. You can agree with me now. If you do not agree with me now, you can agree with me three years from now, five years from now. Why? I'm telling you the God's honest truth. And I didn't jump to any sort of Holy Spirit or supernatural anything. So there's nothing any atheist can argue with. It's a God's honest truth. Materialism is over. It's insufficient to explain the data. You could be forgiven for thinking the world was, you know, a big, great big clock of mechanics circa 1908. By 1925, we found out the world's way, way different than that. And we're still coming to terms with what that actually means. But one thing we know for certain, materialism is an insufficient, outmoded way of talking about reality. Why? It's not, that's, that's just doesn't work anymore. It's over. You can grieve me now, grieve me five years from now. It doesn't make any difference to me. Let me see if I'm running on time. Even Pine Creek Doug is ultimately an idealist. He said it, his words.
There's material world, I could be wrong. There's just physical processes, could be wrong about that. If we prove to him the Holy Ghost, maybe he'll believe in the Holy Ghost, but it's irrelevant. In his worldview, Chris is an atheist too. That was atheist to atheist. Chris is more accurate in his description of reality. There's stuff and there's the phenomena of stuff. So being as charitable as possible to Pine Creek Doug's worldview. In the beginning, stuff. And you say, well, how did life arise? Okay, so some chemical met some other chemical, and there was some gas emitted. That gas emitted energy, and that energy and those forces started acting on the other stuff, and then some chemical combination of life. And then out of that arose human beings and then consciousness. Even then, there's stuff and forces acting upon the stuff. The phenomena of the stuff, even then. The subtle distinction between consciousness, how things appear in consciousness, and how they actually are is there. It's an inescapable fact about reality. We, to some degree, interact in our perceiving of the world. That's a fact. There are the dots on, the, on the, the screen, there's a bunch of different things you can watch online. There's another guy who shows this really cool thing. Um, same idea. He shows you these color schemes, and he tells you you know, what colors, and there's two shades of gray, and how he configures it, your, your brain interprets the gray for you, just like they think that we, we are born to interpret reality as 3D. Okay, we, we are born with virtual reality projectors in our brains. They interpret reality for us. They don't tell us what's actually there. They re-represent it back to us in a way different than it actually is. Sometimes those discrepancies are really important. The one I always go to is my desk. I re-represent it back to myself as solid matter. It isn't solid matter. It's electrons in motion. There's thousands of those types of discrepancies. Where they are and how many, we don't know yet. But those facts alone make idealism the only game in town. Why? Because that, how it presents itself in consciousness is part of the story of it. And that story is different than what it actually is. Materialism doesn't tell you that. Materialism only tells you what it is comprised of materially. That's only one part of the story of anything. The other part of the story is how it presents itself in consciousness. Idealism can account for both. I can tell you how it represents in consciousness as an idealist. Okay? Idealism doesn't mean supernatural. You see, Tom John always conflates idealism with dualism. It says supernatural, it could be so It doesn't mean supernatural. It doesn't mean I only think the real world is being conjured up by my brain. Those are misconceptions about what idealism actually means. So if you prefer conscious realism, I'll use conscious realism. It is the philosophy that is to come. Why? Because it's the only one that accounts for both data points, what the stuff is and how the stuff manifests. It's the only one that accounts for the porous ethereal nature of reality itself. Reality itself is relational to some degree. Relational. There is no standalone ontology to the desk in front of you. There is at the, quantum, at the macro level, but at the, at the quantum level, no. No. It's relation. Is, isn't there, is, isn't there indeterminate. Quantum mechanics has proved this, guys. It's over. Over. You agree with me now, you agree with me three years from now, five years from now, it doesn't matter. Material is over. Done. Gone. Eventually, Sean Carroll will be on my page. Sean Carroll, by the way, one of my other videos, Sean Carroll described himself as a materialist the exact same way Pine Creek Doug did. So Pine Creek Doug is in good company. Einstein himself tried to defend Pine Creek Doug's worldview. So he's in good company. Except that Einstein gave up and said that quantum mechanics is right. And reality is different than the scientist would have had you believe circa 1908. Scientists has, haven't processed that out yet. At some point soon they will. Once they do, materialism will be eliminated out of the realm of possibilities because everything I just told you is God's honest truth. So, with that, uh, welcome to the wonderful world of idealism, Pine Creek Duck. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure I want them over. Welcome to the wonderful world of idealism, Pine Creek Duck. You can still be an atheist. It's just going to automatically produce a lot more theists. Why? Because it goes hand in hand with theism a lot easier than atheism. You know, all the famous cognitive dissonance that I'm supposed to have when I read the Bible. He goes, all his Old Testament scriptures, his Old Testament, aren't you, how's your head clangy clanging with all this cognitive dissonance? Not really all that dissonant if you're not a literalist. It's not dissonant at all. But the cognitive dissonance, dissonance will start to appear more on their side of things. Why? Because it's really complex questions that don't have easy answers. 
really complex questions appear that don't have easy answers. I'll go into this. Uh, uh, there's a William Lane Craig versus uh, not Pine Creek Doug. That's the guy I'm talking to right now. Who's the guy? Uh, Penrose. Sir Roger Penrose. I'll, I'll post a video on that. Sir Roger Penrose's version of reality, he's an ag atheist agnostic, is almost identical to mine. The only difference between him and me, and his is consistent with the data, consistent with the facts, the only difference between him and me is that I have spiritual experiences, religious experience, he doesn't. Other than that, we see the world almost the exact same way. And I would expect almost every atheist or agnostic to agree with the basic facts of reality. So like I said, Jeffrey Williams, an atheist, an agnostic, and I start talking about the nature of reality. As long as I don't assert God or God belief anywhere in there, okay, are, are indistinguishable from each other. Who's talking? Indistinguishable. It's very different than even Pine Creek Doug's worldview. Pine Creek Doug needs to move to where we're at. Why? Because his, his worldview is outdated. It's materialist and scientism is probably scientism is. Both of those positions are done. Done. Materialism is over. It's an outmoded way of viewing reality. It doesn't work anymore. So, you know, it's, it'd be great to be a you know, real hard-minded scientist circa 1908 and say I'm a materialist. Fine. But you can't be a hard-nosed scientist today and say I'm a materialist. That's why I posted that video with uh, Carlo Rovelli, the actual physicist with Sean Carroll, the materialist physicalist, who isn't actually a physicist. He's like William Lane Craig. <coughs> He's a popularizer of things in physics. I think. I don't think he actually does experiments and works on physics. I think he just popularized it. But... Sean Carroll took Pine Creek Doug's worldview. I'm a scientist. Therefore, I'm a realist. Therefore, I'm a physicalist and a realist. And, and the actual scientist, the actual physicist starts going, yeah, I'm a realist too. Chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. Within reason, dude. <laughs> Within reason. Quantum mechanics tells us stuff about the nature of reality itself. It need not be some big struggle if you're an atheist. I didn't say anything about God. So you can put your sword down to convert man. I didn't say anything that you have to believe in that isn't there. Did I? No, I didn't assert any men. Pine Creek Doug, you too. I, didn't, I did not assert any metaphysical thing that you need to sign off on that isn't there. I just told you about the nature of reality itself according to the physics, according to the facts. If you're an atheist and you have said to yourself, I want to proportion my beliefs to the evidence, I just told you exactly what the evidence tells you. Exactly what the evidence tells you. Materialism, over. You can still not believe in God if you want to. But you can't be a materialist anymore. Why? It's over. It's an outmoded way of viewing reality. Agree with me now. You can agree with me five years from now. Don't make no difference to me. Don't make no difference to me, kids. So, there you have it. Going off on my little rants. Go watch that little debate between Pine Creek and Chris. I mean, it gets a little jumbled when he starts trying to explain will. He's basically adopted Schopenhauer's will and representation. But he said one really important thing. There's matter and there's the phenomena of matter. Okay, that's a subtle distinction. And that subtle distinction means materialism fails. Why? Because there is the phenomena of matter. There's how it presents itself in consciousness. And that is a story about the world. And that story about the world cannot be told through strictly material, material processes. End of discussion. Agree with me now, five years from now, don't make any difference to me. Just told you the God's honest truth. Just told you the God's honest truth. Materialism is insufficient to explain the data. Quantum mechanics literally removed it as a possibility. So, there you have it, kids. That is all for now. I think that was all pretty crystal clear. If not, don't matter. Another video coming down the pike, which will help clarify even more. That's all for now. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.